this common divisor of the left side is three, six X plus nine Y. So the left side is a multiple of three and take out a three, but the right side is not a multiple of three, it's 11. And so there'll be no values of X and Y that will make a multiple of three equal to a non-multiple of three. Six times any number plus nine times any number is not, is not going to give you 11. One point. We can take out the common factor of three on the left side. So if you did that from six X plus nine Y equals 11, if you take out the three, you have three times two X huh? plus three Y equals 11. And so you have, so you'd, so you'd have um, three dividing 11, right? If you had three times two X plus three Y in parentheses equals 11, that would say that three divides 11 and it doesn't. So you get no solution. So you have a solution precisely when the greatest common divisor of the coefficients uh, called an A and B divides called the constant term N on the right side. So if the greatest common divisor of the coefficients on the left does not divide the right side, no solution. You know, not all equations have solutions. If you write something like in real numbers, x squared equals negative one, there's no solution in real numbers. Uh, if you write x squared plus y squared equals one, the graph of that would be a unit circle centered at the origin. If you write x squared plus y squared equals zero, the graph of x, 26 people, the graph of x squared plus y squared equals zero is what? It's just the origin itself and x squared plus y squared equals negative one has no real solution. Uh, similarly, uh, the equation, um, the absolute value of x equals negative two, you know, has no solution or the norm of a vector equals negative two. No, that can't happen. Um, in real numbers, the sine and cosine can't exceed one in absolute value. It can in complex numbers. But in real numbers, sine of x equals two has no solution. Um, in real numbers, uh, negative numbers don't have logarithms. Y equals um, negative, log of negative two. Uh, you don't have that. You do in complex numbers. Um, so yeah, you know, I can write something like six X plus nine Y equals 11, but that doesn't mean that there are any values that satisfy it. So you just say so, no solutions. If the greatest common divisor of the coefficients A and B does divide the constant term N, simplify it by dividing through by that greatest common divisor. That will leave the new coefficients relatively prime, co-prime, prime to each other. You'll take out the greatest common divisor, so there are no more common divisors other than one. Um, and so the, the coefficients will be relatively prime. So we'll start with that. So, okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you a horrifying list of steps to take in solving a Diophantine equation. And you'll probably just shut this off and say, I, I can't deal with this the way I feel about this <laughs> computer um, and teaching with it. Uh, speaking of teaching with it, uh, tonight and Tuesday, after our class, I have to observe other classes. So I'll stay for a little while, but you know, not indefinitely, just today and Tuesday after do those class observations. Um, so um, bear with me as I say, what I'm going to do is give you a lot of explicit, specific, detailed steps on how to solve a Diophantine equation. But the solution, the implementation is really m much simpler. Why well, are we down to 25 or 26 people? Maybe they're turned off already, one person. Anyway, so st stick with it. You know, it's very often easier to do something, to implement something, than to describe it. For instance, suppose you want to describe to someone how to hammer in a nail. Well, you have to go through a lot of steps. You know, you have to find a, a hammer, and then you have to pick up the hammer, and you have to place a nail, and you have to hold it. It's much harder to explain how to hammer a nail than to take a nail and show how to hammer it. So. It'll be similar with this. I'm going to give you a lot of steps and I'm doing that so that 
if you're not sure at any point as to what to do, you'll have a list of steps. But once we do a couple of examples, uh, it'll just be much simpler. So let me shut this off, get into OneNote. And so the homework will be um, the top of the page that I have managed to send you on cleverly enough, uh, entitled Diophantine Equations. So there are how many of them? Uh, there are 12, 13, 14, sorry, so there are 14 questions all together. So uh, you have that. I've sent it to you, I've actually been able to send it. I'm still working on sending some other things and still working on um, getting the recordings of classes to you. Um, I guess I mentioned that, yeah, um, that my email was out of service. It's back now, so I can get on to a Zoom meeting with Professor Bowen over the weekend and finally get that to you. And then the next thing you have to do is learn how to give a test. So, okay, um, so here goes. I'm going to shut this off and get into OneNote. Okay. Um, This meeting is being recorded. Right. Um, did I do that wrong? I may have to end this and start again. Um, let me try it again without starting again. Maybe I should end it and start again. Let me try this. So, uh, I guess it's already being recorded. Oh, okay. Okay, I think now we should be ready. So let's expand that. The Let's in again. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so again, um, oh, you can hear me, right? Yes. yes. Good. Okay, thank you for confirming that. Um, yeah, so so the Diophantine equation. And again, Diophantine equation means so everything is the coefficients a and b and the constant term n and the solutions x and y. Um, has uh, 
I was gonna say a solution, but actually solutions. So if and only if the greatest common divisor of the coefficients a and b divide n. And, you know, say so, you know, you know, this equation has no solutions because the greatest common divisor of the coefficients does not divide the constant term. Um, but if in fact the greatest common divisor of A and B does divide in, um, solutions exist. And what were they? We saw that if x sub 0, y sub 0 is one solution, We get an infinite number of solutions, all solutions look like x equals a particular value of x and y equals a particular value of y. Um, x plus kb, x sub zero plus kb, and y sub zero minus ka. And um, that's true to all integers k. Um, now, sometimes we'll have special conditions imposed on the solutions, and we'll take a look at that. But the point is, since you have solutions if and only if the greatest common divisor of A and B divides N, um, let's do that. So we will um, start, uh, so, so step one, will be um, to observe what we just said, uh, ax plus by equals n has a solution. I'm just repeating this so you'll have it all together. Uh, if and only if the greatest common divisor of a and b divides n. So we will start by dividing both sides of the equation by that greatest common divisor. Dr. Friedland, on number one, is that AX plus BY equal to A? No, a? A? no, okay. no, oh. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, do clarify that. It's, it's, it's glass is slippery and 
but okay, I've complained about that before, so I won't repeat the complaints. Okay, so, um, so you get a solution only if the greatest common divisor of the coefficients divides the right side. So let's actually divide through by that greatest common divisor. Start by dividing both sides by that great, greatest common divisor um, so that the coefficients So if you've, if you've divided by the greatest common divisor, there are no more common divisors, uh, again, other than one. So that will leave the re remaining coefficients relatively prime. And just to repeat the definition that we had on Tuesday, i.e. that is, um, you know, there are no more common divisors greater than one. Um, Um, okay, um, so we'll just start by doing that, uh, thus we will be working with a Diophantine equation whose coefficients are relatively prime. Okay, so uh, assume this done. So this will be our starting point. You know, if, if you want to call it step zero, uh, do that. Divide by divide through by the greatest common divisor of the coefficients, and then that leaves no more common divisors other than one, no bigger common divisors, so they're relatively prime. So we'll, we'll just, you know, start with that, you know, do that first. Uh, and also, for a reason that you'll see, because, well, I'll tell you what the reason is, we'll be getting several Diophantine equations, but we're going to have to refer to the previous ones to get the answer to the original Diophantine equation. So I would recommend that you underline each Diophantine equation. You'll see what that means. We get other Diophantine equations. This will make it easier to find them. Okay, so... Um, Let's call that step three. Start with the greatest common divisor of the coefficients, um, just plain one, and underline each 
the Fantine equation. So when we assume that, uh, step three is assume that it is done. I mean, uh, that the coefficient are relatively prime. All right? Yeah, exactly. Three. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, yeah, so when I write AX plus BY equals N, I'm starting with A and B relatively prime. Yeah, I've already divided it. Yeah, that'll be like step zero. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I wrote the greatest common divisor is one in the equation AX plus BY equals N, or yeah, you could reverse it, but yeah, this, this is fine. Um, okay, so, so far we've taken the original Diophantine equation and divided through by the greatest common divisor. So, for instance, if the original equation were, I'll go back to what I said before, say 6X plus 9Y. Well, if it equals 11, there's no solution. If it equals 12, then the greatest common divisor of the coefficients six and nine, uh, which is three, does divide the constant term 12. So start by dividing through by that three. So again, if you have, yeah, if you, th this isn't step four, I'm just gonna write. If you have, say, six X plus nine Y, equals 12 or equals oh, 15. No, no, I, I, I said that these steps are horrifying, but once we do the actual, once we implement them, uh, you'll see it's not horrifying at all. But if you forget a step, I mean, I think too often in mathematics classes, a uh, teacher will just put down steps and then you look at it at home and, whoa, uh, how do they get from, how do you get from here to there? So that's why I'm putting in the steps. But when we actually implement them, uh, it'll be much simpler. So divide through by three, which is the greatest common divisor of six and nine. And so we'll have two X plus three Y and we're dividing by three equals five. And now these are co-prime, relatively prime. And so this equation will have a solution. So we're going to start with, you know, if we're given this, we will actually start with this. Okay, so that's, just an initial step. That's something, you know, that's something you would probably do if you're solving any equation, um, you know, divide through, you know, simplify it first. Okay, so um, also for the sake of uniformity and keeping track of what you're doing, um, Okay, so, so far we've divided through by the greatest common divisor. And so the coefficients are relatively prime and underline the Diophantine equation. So um, also again, for simplicity and for uniformity, um, let's um, put, the term whose coefficient has the smaller absolute value first. So for instance, over here, So again, if we're given this equation, the six X plus nine Y equals 15 as sort of step zero, we will divide through, we will divide by the greatest common divisor of the coefficients. And this, will, this then will be our starting point. We'll start with this, 2x plus 3y equals five. And 
obviously it doesn't make a difference mathematically which term comes first, uh, you'll find it convenient to start with 2x plus 3y equals 5 by putting that So if it isn't already that way, switch it around. Um, so it doesn't matter, X and Y are unknowns. In other words, if, if you had had um, three X plus two Y equals five, right? 2y plus 3x equals 5. Again, smaller first. And it doesn't matter whether you write over here 3x plus 2y equals 5 or 2y plus 3x equals 5 by the commutative property of addition. It doesn't matter. You're still going to find x and y. So for convenience, let's start with the smaller coefficient first, the one that has the smaller absolute value. But again, it, you know, it's harder to say that than to just do it. So um, I don't know, should I leave that? All right, I'll leave and go on to step five. Okay, so So we have AX plus BY equals N. And underline that Diophantine equation. So if A divides N, so that n equals n sub zero a, uh, maybe I'll put the a first. Okay, so if A divides N, what does that mean? It means N is A times something, say A times N sub zero. Let Y equal zero in the Diophantine equation, what's underlined in AX plus BY equals N. And that gives us AX, well, plus zero. Which you don't ordinarily write, but I'm making Y in the Diophantine equation here, that's on the line, Y equals a zero. Uh, and then you're left with just AX, AX here is the AX plus, well, plus zero equals N where n is a n sub zero, I'll use whence again the way I did on Tuesday, whence from which um, dividing by a, um, you know, dividing by a, it's really, remember the cancellation law in an integral domain. Uh, a is not zero. If a is zero, then the equation is just by equals n and it's trivial. Um, so, x equals n sub zero. And in that case, we're done. The, I should say a solution because there's an infinite number of them. A solution is x equals 
there, n sub zero, and y equals zero. And that's if the, uh, the smaller coefficient a divides the constant on the right. What if it doesn't? If it, if it does, you, if it does, you're done. Just make y equal to zero. That will get rid of this term. And so y is zero. So that's part of the solution there. And then since a divides n, do that division, you get what x is. And so you're done. Um, so what if a does not divide the constant? Now, since one and negative one divide everything, if A doesn't divide in, A is not positive or negative one. So we'll have that one is actually specifically less than A. And since we've set it up so that the, first, the absolute value of the first term is less than the absolute value of the second term, the, the coefficient of the second term. So we have one is less than, strictly less than because of this. Uh, one is less than the absolute value of A, the absolute value of the coefficient of the first term, AX, the coefficient is A, which is also less than the absolute value of the second term. Um, so once we have that, Dr. Friedman? Yeah. So in step six, if A does not divide into N, then A is not equal to plus or minus one. So one is less than S to the value of A, less than S to the value of B. Can you kind of explain that again? Well, okay, so we're looking at two cases. Over here in step five, case one is A divides N. And in step six, we're looking at the other possibility that A does not divide in, that the lead coefficient does not divide it. For instance, what did I just have over here? Two, here, two, look, uh, over here. So this is an example up here uh, where A does not divide N. That is two does not divide five. So that's what I'm talking about in step six. Um, if instead of being four, uh, instead of being five here, it had been four or six, then um, for instance, if we had two X plus three Y equals six, um, you can just make Y, it's a terrible Y, Y equal to zero, then x, so if y equals 0, you're left with 2x equals 6, x equals 3. So if so this, what I just wrote, illustrates step 5. If a does divide n, if 2 does divide 6, which it does, make y equal to 0, so, okay, so y equals zero, that's the value of y. And then you have two x equals six, so x equals three. So if you have a value of x and a value of y, and then you can get all solutions by saying um, x equals three plus uh, k times a, a is two. And well, well, we'll do this later. And then y equals zero minus k times b, where b is three, so it's minus three k. That would give all solutions. Thank you. But yes, yeah, so over here, a the coefficient does not divide five. So in that oh, case, sorry, Dr. Peter, just one last thing. So what we just went over is a solution is not the solution, correct? When if we make y is equal to zero, then x is equal to three is a solution. Yeah, is a solution, and then yeah, then as I said, all solutions are of the form this. And that gives 
all solutions. So yeah, so uh, over here, say if x equals three, then all solutions, all values of x over here would be three plus b over here is the second coefficient that's three times k. So in this example here, I, I said it, I don't have room to write it. Um, all solutions would be x equals, here it is, a particular value of x, namely three plus k times b, where b is the second coefficient in ax plus by, so it's three k. So all solutions to this equation would be x equals three, a particular value of three, plus three k, plus k times b, and this is b. And y, all values of y would be a particular value of y, zero, so you don't have to put that in, minus over here, minus k times a, where a is two, so all values of y would be negative two k where k is any integer. And we'll do that, we'll take some examples. So if a does not divide n, use the division algorithm, division algorithm. To divide both D and N by A. Uh, more generally, that is what I'm saying is to avoid, you know, B and N, because you might have another Diophantine equation. Um, what, what I'm saying is divide the second coefficient. That's why I wanted to put the smaller one first. So if you have two X plus three Y, the smaller one is first. Divide the second coefficient, the multiplier of Y, and the constant term on the right, Yep. Yeah, I'm just repeating. Yeah, divide b and n by a. Uh, so yeah, b is the second coefficient and n is the constant term. But I'm just rewriting it because we're going to have other Diophantine. This is going to lead to other Diophantine equations. So I want you to see it in general. So what we're really doing here, uh, yeah, in, in this case, when you have a x plus b y equals n, you're dividing b and n by a, but what are you really doing? You're dividing the second coefficient and the constant term by the coefficient of the first term. That's a in, in this. So that gives, let's remember the division algorithm. So we're going to divide the, sec, the coefficient of the second term, b, by a. So what does the division algorithm say? It says b is going to equal a times some quotient plus some remainder, where 0 is now strictly less than r sub one is less than the absolute value of a. Um, in the regular, ge the general statement of the division algorithm, uh, zero is less than or equal to r sub one. So this is strict inequality. It's not less than or equal to. Um, why is that? Why do we not have, in this case, 
um, you know, zero is less than or equal to the remainder, as in the general division algorithm, um, where uh, zero is less than or equal to the remainder is strictly less than the divisor. Well, what if R did equal zero? If R sub one did equal zero, no, it's, an, it's not that. If if R sub one does equal zero, then then look, you're dividing by A and you have a remainder of zero, um, then A divides B. But if A divides B, A certainly divides A, uh, and then so A would divide each term of the left side, so it would have to divide N, and in at this step, A does not divide N. Right, if, if, this, if this R sub one were equal to zero, I don't wanna to make too big a deal over this, um, you'll see what happens in practice, but I'll just mention uh, for those who want to see that um, if R sub one equals zero, the remainder is zero, and that would say that A over here divides B, um, but if A divides B, the second term, and certainly A divides A in the first term, it would divide the left side, so it would have to divide the right side, it would have to divide N, but it doesn't. Okay, um, and we're going to divide the constant term N by A using the division algorithm, and that gives us N equals A some Q sub, I've used Q sub one over here, so I'll say Q sub two, uh, plus, and again, uh, a remainder. I've used R sub one as a remainder here, so let's, let's call this R sub two, where again, zero is less than R sub two is less than the, the absolute value of the divisor A. Now, what are we going to do with that? Well, so we'll substitute, substitute these expressions for B, here's what B is over here, and N, here's what N is over here. in the diaphragm, the, under, uh, the underlined diaphragm equation, which is over here in the Dr. Freeland, um, in step A, substitute these expression for B and N, correct? Yeah, 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 we have, yeah, that, that's what we got over here. Here we have an expression for N, here we have an expression for B. So we're going to go back to our AX plus BY equals N and put in what B is over here and what N is over here, and that will give us AX, you know, again, this seems like a lot of work and a lot of steps, but notice that no, nothing is involved here at all with the, that, that goes beyond elementary algebra. Uh, taking out a common monomial factor, like if you have, you know, 2x plus 2y, you know how to take out a 2 and be left with x plus y. And the only other thing we're using from elementary algebra 
that we'll be using is moving a term from one side of the equation to the other by changing its sign. That is all we're using. There's no higher mathematics involved here. Uh, there are a lot of steps and you have to be careful with the subscripts. But, but the point is when you're doing this in actual practice, you'll have numbers there. You won't be using R sub one and R sub two and Q sub one and Q sub two and so on. But I'm putting those things in to explain it if you have to go back and see where something comes from. So when you do that, you have a x, there's your a x plus b y, but but b over here is a q sub one plus r sub one, and then we have a y here times y. Okay, so that's that's what B is. Here's, here's what B is. And, you know, just copy. And here's what N is. Um, so N is A Q sub 2 plus R sub 2. That is just N. And uh, let's uh, simplify that. So let's... Uh, Write this as AX plus, okay, so distributive property, we multiply in the, uh, the Y, and so we get A Q sub one Y, there's the Y, plus R sub one Y. From right there. And that equals what we have on the right, which is a q sub two plus r sub two. Now, this is what I said about moving terms from one side to the other. Get all terms that don't have without the let me start with with get all terms with or that have uh, the first coefficient of the Diophantine equation. On the right, so we're separating, we're picking out the terms over here. We're picking out the terms that have the first coefficient, the a's, and putting them on the right by changing the sign. And terms. And that's because, like you wrote, it goes back to the diophantine equation where you wrote all of the a's first and the b second, correct? Uh, what? No, I started by having the term with the smaller coefficient in absolute value first and the second, the, the larger one second. And now I'm taking the second coefficient here and the constant there and dividing by the smaller first coefficient, namely a and when we do that by the division algorithm, we get this and this, and then we go back into the Diophantine equation that I just put a box around and replace B and N with what they are. 
which we got in step seven, what B is and what N is. And now it's just a matter of substitution, you know, with parentheses, of course, before you substitute. Um, so here's, instead of D, we have this, instead of N, we have this. Uh, and then when you multiply that, you get this. And now what I'm saying is take all terms that have the first coefficient A in them, and get them all on the right. And then the terms that don't have A over here and over here, I'll put them on the left. You'll see why in a moment. Um, terms without Andrew. it on the left. So when we do that, um, we get we get R sub one. Y over here. So I, I want I want terms that don't have A in them on the left. R sub one Y doesn't have A in it and R sub two doesn't have A in it. <clears throat> bring the, so this term's already <clears throat> on the left, bring this R sub two to the left minus R sub two. And then put all terms with A with the first coefficient on the right side. So this is already on the right side. So we have A Q sub two, leave a little room. I'm gonna save a step. And then we have to bring the other terms that have A's in onto the right side. So it'll become minus A X, but I'm going to just take out the A and just have minus X. And over here, here's another term with an A in it, put it on the other side by changing the signs, so it'll become minus a, but I've taken the, the a out, so it'll be minus q sub one y. So now, this shows that you know, all these little things that we've been developing all the time that seem individually trivial, yeah, they may be, but you have to practice with them and recognize them. This shows, what does this show? Look at this last equation. R sub one y minus R sub two equals A times something. What does that say? If R sub, this, the left side, R sub one Y minus R sub two equals A times something, that's a definition of saying A divides R sub one Y minus R sub two, because R sub one over here, R sub one Y equals A times something. So, um, so R sub one Y minus R sub two equals A times something. Let's call this something, call this, we've used X and Y, so I'm going to Z. And now, why are we calling a negative and not just a positive view? Yeah, you'll see in a moment. Um, putting the terms uh, with the unknowns, with the letters, the unknowns, um, Y and Z. It doesn't matter what I call it, uh, but for convenience, as you're about to see, um, uh, 
So we're going to do what we usually do in an equation. We'll put the terms with the unknowns on the left and the constant on the right. Uh, look, this, this R sub 2 here, that's a constant. There's no Y, there's no Z, there's no X. That, that's a constant. Uh, and so when we do that, uh, we get, okay, so now you'll see why I chose negative Z. So that makes this negative AZ, but when I put it on the other side, uh, we get R sub 1 plus a z so it's just easier to work with again it doesn't matter what you call the complementary factor of a uh, if you call it negative z then you avoid having a negative sign on the left and you have just r sub one y plus a z and then you put the constant on the other side but it's minus r sub two so on the right side it's plus r sub two and this is, look at what this is. This is a Diophantine equation. And the expression we use is, it's, a, it's an equation in Y and Z. It means uh, it's an equation whose unknowns are Y and Z, but we just usually say it's an equation in Y and z and what i'm suggesting is that when you come to a new diophantine equation because you're going to have to come back to it uh this is a little messy what i'm doing because i've underlined a lot of things uh underlined it maybe so i can find it easily i should put red around it. And then the first one was... If I may also make a suggestion, Dr. Freeman, we can also use the highlighter. Oh, the highlighter. Oh, yeah, yeah, here's a highlighter. Right. Oh, okay. Highlighter, that's even better. Oh, that makes it hard to read, though. Hmm. You know, I can use, oh, I can, oh, maybe that's why people use yellow. Um, if, you, if you want to take out the red, just click on that redo button. Right next to on your top left corner, you have that magnifying glass. Right next yeah. to that, you see that arrow? Yeah. Oh. No, uh, so go oh, make the screen okay. big. Yeah, it went back. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, the arrow just, oh, okay. no, away. On the left, on the left, no, this, uh, uh, my left, so that should be your... No, 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 it's, it's yep. yeah, yeah, it, it's a back arrow. And okay. it erased, it erased that red. So now let's see what happens. So you gotta change back to the highlight and change the color. Yeah. Um, so I guess, how about, um, have a bunch of different colors here. Yeah. <laughs> yellow, yellow looks too light, maybe... Yellow is the best, no. Yeah, you can trust me on that. Yes. Sir. Okay, there we go. Okay, you know what? Yeah. That's good. That yeah, fine. That highlights it without compromising its legibility. Okay, so we have that, and then this. I mean, when you do it, you don't have to use a color, you just underline it. Okay, so we will go back to okay, whoops. Okay, so now we have a new um, a new Diophantine equation. So we will repeat. steps five to 10 on this Diophantine equation. Namely, if Same thing if R1, which is the first coefficient, 
divides the constant term R2, R sub 2, make z equal to 0, that determines y, and then go back this is why you should underline it. Go back to the original Diophantine equation to find x. If not, If R sub 1 does not divide R sub 2, use the division algorithm. To divide, just what we did before, the second coefficient, in this case it's A, divide A, and the constant term, in this case, it's R sub 2, by the first coefficient, which is smaller, R sub 1, substitute in that Diophantine equation, this R sub 1 y plus a z equals r sub 2. It will simplify and get all terms with the first coefficient before it was a, now it's r sub 1, with r sub 1 on the right. Dr. Friedel, are you going to turn? What? On step 12, uh, so if R sub 1 divides R sub 2, that's Z equals 0, that determines Y. Go back to the original equation to find X, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So do what we just did before, and then I want to go to an example of two. So you can see how simple this actually is, uh, despite all the writing. Um, so get all terms with the um, first coefficient, which in this case is R sub 1 on the right, all other terms on the left. And so, again, that shows that... So you take all terms of R sub 1 on the right, pull out that common factor of R sub 1, that will show that R sub 1 divides the left side leading to another Diophantine equation. And you keep doing this until eventually the first coefficient does divide the constant. So that would be like this. Eventually, let's see why, you are eventually going to get 
the first coefficient dividing the constant term um, That'll always happen. Because we started, we divided by A. So we started with A um, and then we got that the remainder was less than A. That was what we saw in the division algorithm. The remainders keep getting smaller. And yes, again, this process must end because there are only a finite number of numbers of positive numbers, meaning integers. Less than the absolute value of A. And so let's um, just check into, oh, I thought I had parentheses here. Close parentheses. Um, you know what? L let's go to an example. And you'll see that this is actually pretty simple. Uh, let's go back to that example. Oh, it's already getting late. Um, well, uh, let's go back to the example of. Um, Professor, can I move up a little bit? Because I didn't finish. Oh. Thank you so much. Sorry. Um, so. In how many ways can $25 be paid in $2 bills and $5 bills? Okay, so we get the equation. So let say x equal number of two dollar bills y equal number of five dollar bills. And as we saw, that leads to the equation 2x plus 5y equals 25. So there are x2s, so it's 2x, that amount, plus y5s, that amount, equals $25 altogether. Um, so um, the greatest common divisor of the coefficients two and five which is one divides the right side of the coefficients the greatest common divisor of the coefficients divides the constant term So the equation has solutions.
and they're relatively prime. Again, if not first divide by the greatest common divisor. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we have two X plus five Y equals 25, underline it. Divide the second coefficient and the constant by the first coefficient. So five equals two times, the quotient will be two plus one. That's what five is. And the 25, we're dividing by two, so it equals two times 12 plus one. So that's what five is, that's what 25 is, substitute in the equation. So we have two X plus, oh, here's what five is, parentheses, two times two plus one, times y, okay, times y, equals 25, which over here we have is two times 12 plus one. Let's do the multiplication, get rid of parentheses. We have two x plus two times two times y, multiply in the y, plus one, times y equals two times 12 plus one. Now we wanna find all terms that have the first coefficient in them. So um, here we'll, as long as I know how to use this. So, so there's a term with two, there's a term with two, there's a term with two, put them all on the right and um, two, two, no, two, two, and two, right? How about two y, two times two y? So two X plus two times two Y, correct? Yeah, two, yeah, so yeah, this, is, this two is the coefficient, that and that are the first coefficient here. So put those terms on the right, and then the terms that don't have twos on the left. Oh, no, 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 by the order of operations, multiplication um, comes, hmm, can I mute everyone? I think I can't. I think, yeah, I think I, I cannot mute everyone in one note. All right, so, um, no, 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 by the order of operations, terms are things separated by pluses and minuses. Those are, th those are three terms on the left, separated by pluses and minuses. No, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, you know, that, that's an important point, actually. I've seen students make that mistake. Right, it's two times two y, mu term plus one y. So let's get all the terms with the twos on the right, and all terms that don't have it, this one y, which is just y, but I'll put it in so you can see it. Minus one, I'm taking this one and putting it on the left, equals, and now I'm going to 
put all terms with the yellow two to the right and let me take it out. And so we have, well, the two times 12 is already there. Uh, then minus, I've taken out the two, so it's just minus X. And then I've taken out the two here, so it's minus two Y. And that shows that two divides one Y minus one. And so this is going to lead to our next Diophantine equation. So this one Y, this one Y minus one is a multiple of two. So it's two times say negative W and then you put it on the other side and you get a new Diophantine equation. y or one y plus two, this two divides that, so it's two times something, say two, uh, I've used x and y, two z. Equals one. Okay, so th this two divides one, one y minus one, so we'll get one y plus say two z and put this minus one on the other side. Um, underline it, that's a Diophantine equation. And now the first coefficient does divide the constant term. That is one divides one. So choose for z, make z equal to zero, underline it. Then if z equals zero, we have one y equals one, y equals one, underline it. Now, so now we know what y is, we go back to the previous, which is the first in this case, but there might be others as you go along, previous equation, which you have underlined at the top, 2x plus 5y equals 25. And so we get 2x plus 5 times y is 1 equals 25, so 2x equals 20, x equals 10, underline it. So all solutions are x equals a particular value of x, underline it, so you have it in front of you, plus k times a, where a, this is a x plus b y equals n, where a is two and y equals a particular value of y, there it is, one, minus k times a, a is two. Um, uh, I'm sorry, um, x equals x sub zero plus k b, b, b. This is over here, change that, that's we want a five here. That's a B. And finally, So we, we can't have a negative number of $2 bills or $5 bills. So we have to have 
x, which equals 10 plus 5k, has to be greater than 0. And y, which equals 1 minus 2k, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So here we get k is greater than negative the strict inequality or u is greater than or equal to zero, one minus two k. Uh yeah, it could yeah, it actually could be non-negative. Yeah, it could be zero. That's right. Yeah, it could be zero. Yeah, you might have none of one of them. So yeah, so greater than or equal to. Okay, so 10 minus 5k has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, put the 10 on the other side. So 5k is greater than or equal to negative 10. And we preserve the inequality. We showed this earlier in the term by dividing by positive five. So you get k is greater than or equal to negative two. And over here, if you put the 2k on the other side, you get one is greater than or equal to 2k or one half is greater than or equal to k. So we have these inequalities. So we have one half is great. Remember, it, it, you can concatenate, you can form a chain of inequalities, but they have to go in the same direction. So we have over here, one is greater than or equal to k, which in, so that's this which in turn is greater than or equal to negative two, where k is an integer. So what can k equal? Well, it has to be an integer less than a half. So what could it be? has to be an integer less than a half. So, yeah, yeah, it has to be less than a half, zero, and it has to be greater than or equal to negative two. So what else can it be? Think of the number line. So here's- Negative one. Neg yeah, there's negative two, there's negative one, there's zero, there's a half. And so, um, yeah, k could be negative one, and k could also be negative two. So the answer, or answers, when k equals zero, x equals And y, so k equals zero, equals one. So what does that mean? X, remember, was the number of $2 bills. So that's $20, 10 $2 bills. <clears throat> Plus y was the number of $5 bills. Yeah, y equals one $5 bill. Uh, when k equals negative one, x equals, so over here, x equals 10 plus 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 10 plus negative 5 is 5, uh, $2 bills. And y over here, y equals 1 minus 2 times k is negative 1. So that's plus 2. So that's 3 $5 bills. And sure enough, three $5 bills is $15. And, um, and uh, five $2 bills is $10. Yep, that's $25. And finally, when k equals negative 2, x over here, x is 10 plus 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 is 0. $2 bills, and y, when k equals negative 2, is 1 minus 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, $5 bills, which, again, gives $25. So over here, we had 10 $2 bills, that's $20, plus one $5 bill, that's $25. And... Um, 
Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty late now. I will come back to you in case you have any emergency questions. But then I think maybe both of us have other classes to get to. So I uh, think we can do with the homework on that, and we'll continue going over some of this on Tuesday. Um, I think we'll kind of find it fun. It's, as you can see, it's much easier to implement than to write. But anyway, you do have the all, all the steps there. So um, okay. Um, so we're going to. Um, Stop recording, stop.